Welcome back. Singapore is setting aside $66 million in grants to boost nuclear safety research. Among the roles of a new institute, it will assess the potential use of nuclear energy here. Nicholas Ang with this report. Researchers at the Singapore Nuclear Research and Safety Institute are putting zebrafish embryos under the microscope to investigate how cells respond to radiation, not just how they're affected, but how they can be protected. This is among the work to better understand the effects of nuclear radiation on living things. With our strong capabilities and expertise in research and policy, we are well poised to be at the forefront of research in nuclear safety, as well as to enhance regional cooperation and to develop talent in this area. This lab has equipment to precisely measure and detect signs of radiation in environmental samples, such as in soil and water. There are also several staff from the National Environment Agency at the Institute. Working with other experts, they'll monitor radiation levels in Singapore. Equipment at the Institute are also state-of-the-art, protected by the building's thick layers to prevent radiation from leaking out. This is the gamma irradiator. It's a system that's used to ensure that radiation sensing equipment is properly calibrated to international standards. It's behind a 65 centimeter thick wall, thick enough to block the radiation coming out of the device. At the same time, to offer an additional layer of safety, this room is underground and surrounded by soil, which will also block the radiation. The Institute will study other areas like reactor safety, especially designs that have commercial potential. The chairman of the National Research Foundation noted that neighboring countries are planning to deploy nuclear reactors. That could mean different nuclear technologies being used, with unique requirements for each country. Examining the various nuclear policies adopted will be vital, not just for Singapore, but the region. Capability building will help us understand the implications of nuclear developments in the region and ensure that we are prepared if our neighbors choose to deploy nuclear energy. The Institute, located at the National University of Singapore campus, will expand its future research areas to include methods for detecting radiation. It is also aiming to hire 100 staff by 2030. And for more, we're now joined by Dr. Victor Nguyen, founding co-chairman of Center for Strategic Energy and Resources and Independent think tank here in Singapore. Uh, Dr. Nian, welcome to Singapore tonight. First of all, talk to us about the importance uh, of this funding and why there is a need for a facility like the Singapore National Research and Safety Institute building now. Well, thank you for having me. Um, if you look at nuclear research in the, you know, in the nuclear leading countries and also around the region, it is a long-term commitment. Uh, and so, you know, continuous funding uh, such as the $66 million has been committed uh, in building a new building, then researchers can really call it a home where we start to really deep dive into nuclear energy research. And this is also where it enables the talents and also the uh, various research initiatives to be carried out uh, in a continuous manner in the next uh, 5, 10, 20, maybe even a longer horizon in which we can really look at how we can contribute uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of expertise in the nuclear energy space and to help the country, help the region uh, in the nuclear research and technology development in the longer term. So, you know, with the new building and also more dedicated facilities, this is where we can really start to uh, flourish in nuclear energy research. And what should be the immediate priorities of this institute in terms of nuclear research? Well, there, is, there are a few areas, you know, if you look into nuclear energy research or technology development, there are several areas that, you know, any nuclear research institute, including this one, uh, should consider. So, for example, of course, now we're talking about um, the age where nuclear safety is always the ultimate priority. So, for example, advanced nuclear reactor technology how much safer they have become, uh, and also the engineering of it, uh, you know, in terms of, for example, looking into reactor physics, uh, new advanced reactor design, also understanding the traditional reactors that is in operation today. Uh, in addition, fuel cycle would also be another area we should be looking at. Uh, then looking towards the back end, also we need to understand, um, you know, for example, nuclear waste management, spent fuel management. And this has always been the concern uh, of the general public. You know, how do we really deal with radioactive waste? How do we protect ourselves uh, in the event of a, a you know, radiation accident or incident? Uh, 
And also in the Singapore context, since we are at the beginning of nuclear energy research, uh, we also need to look at you know, whether there are policies, regulations, and other issues, uh, maybe softer issues other than the hardcore science and engineering. Those are also be part of the major focus of this institute. Uh, while Singapore has not yet decided on adopting nuclear research, or uh, rather nuclear energy, Dr. Nian, uh, how much can Singapore and the region gain from the knowledge that comes out from the Institute? Because we also understand that neighbouring countries are planning to deploy nuclear reactors. Well, we have not really made a decision uh, when, where, how we're going to build a nuclear power plant. It doesn't mean we need to be ignorant about nuclear power technology development. And we also need to be ready, especially in this case, as you mentioned, you know, the region is looking into nuclear energy. The region is into looking into building nuclear power plant, especially in our neighbors. You know, uh, you know, you look at countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, maybe possibly Malaysia, that are all very becoming very interested in nuclear energy. So having an institute like this will also enable Singapore to be plugged into the regional dialogue and conversations in nuclear safety, in nuclear energy cooperation. Uh, and this is important because although we may not have made a decision to build a nuclear power plant, we, all, we need to be a part of that conversation. And especially um, when the region is moving towards a future where there might even be a potential scale up of nuclear energy. And maybe that could be a, also be a future where Singapore wants to tap into that a clean energy source. Then we need to ready ourselves towards that. And this is not something you know you can build overnight. It takes a long period of time. Uh, you know, readying ourselves, getting the research, education, training the right people, uh, understanding the various issues, uh, and like I said, more importantly, get plugged into the regional dialogue so that when the critical discussions come about. Singapore will be able to make a knowledgeable contribution in those discussions. So what are you expecting in terms of collaboration and sharing of expertise, as well as resources with this institute? Well, the institute is well positioned in the National University of Singapore, which is a reputable university. And actually, this would attract, interna uh, attract international collaborations. Uh, and nuclear energy is no difference. You know, in any, in any research, engineering, science, social science, political science, uh, humanity, uh, we expect collaboration to take place. And that's how we advance the human knowledge or our collective intellectual understanding in any given field. And with the reputation of NUS and with our government commitment in funding and supporting nuclear energy research, this will attract international collaboration and hence patents, resources, and collaborators. And so, because we are uniquely positioned to enable that, this would also allow us to even branch out into collaborating with, actively collaborating with other institutions. Um, and because we get into, we get engaged in that kind of collaboration, this is where we can also accelerate the knowledge building uh, accumulation experience, which then in turn help us accelerate our pathway towards really becoming a knowledgeable country or institution uh, in nuclear energy. Uh, th this is a relatively new sector, Dr. Nian, but how can the Institute uh, help train talent for the sector? Um, precisely because this is a new sector in Singapore. But of course, globally, if I look at nuclear energy, it has been here for decades. Um, it is already a well-established industry. <laughs> so then the key is how can we plug ourselves into that already mature industry and still evolving while making a, a knowledgeable contribution at the same time is also benefiting from the next stage of development, you know, catching up the wave of new innovations, right? Um, and then also get engaged in the uh, international networks or partnerships. Uh, so for example, recently we signed a 123 agreement uh, with the US with the hope of advancing our nuclear research and technology development. <laughs> um, and talent will naturally be a major part of that. And again, you know, because it's, the Institute is um, strategically located in the National University of Singapore, and this automatically becomes a, uh, an important training ground for students, for scholars, and also for future engineers and scientists, mm -hmm. and not to forget also the regulators. So this is where I see, you know, the Institute could really become a holistic, interdisciplinary or multi disciplinary training uh, platform uh, for future, for example, nuclear engineers, scientists, nuclear power plant operators, and maybe even policymakers and regulators.
in the future, there could well be the, you know, the imagination of, you know, training people that is in the finance space, mm. you know, financing nuclear energy uh, projects, okay. legal or illegal space, right? So that really is a, uh, the way I look at it, you know, we can really attract uh, the pool of talent that, as our minister pointed out, 100 talent, uh, 100 strong, uh, really support the country. Research effort. Always a pleasure speaking with you, Dr. Nian. Thank you so much for sharing your insights tonight. Dr. Victor Nian there, founding co-chairman, Center for Strategic Energy and Resources.